Welcome to the latest trading film on how to use your sight to determine distance and develop your convergence. Uh, we've all seen stuff like this where folks fire and the whole airplane just disintegrates. Or uh, when I come in on my little ground training films uh, from the side, uh, a few little rounds and stuff blows up. I even heck come in from behind. And it all seems like all my rounds hit in one spot. Uh, it looks really sexy, but really it's just a function of knowing how far away an object is. In order to do that, we're going to use a little bit of geometry. I can't fly right and I can't shoot very straight, but I can do a little math. Radian partition of a circle is hard to say, but not hard to understand. We're all used to seeing 306 degrees going around in a circle, uh, but degrees are pretty fat, so what they came up with was 6400 mils going all around, really thin stuff. Uh, real thin slices. Now the Soviets, they used 6,000 mils going around. It's the difference between yards and meters during World War II. But in practice, the difference is so small. They're really interchangeable for our purposes, and we can use sights either way. It doesn't matter which kind of mils they used. One mil is pretty interesting because it's got some unique characteristics. So we're going to concentrate on what just one mil does. The really neat thing is if you take one mil and a radius of a thousand meters, the distance on the circle is one meter. To get ten and a half meters, we use ten and a half mils. Now let's take that distance down to a hundred meters. At a hundred meters, that ten and a half meters is a hundred and five mils. At a hundred and five mils, at a hundred meters, the object is ten and a half meters wide. Who cares? Why is this important? Because our good friend the Falk Wolf 190 is ten and a half meters wide. And that's not real important to the driver of that Falk Wolf 190 that's out looking around, but it's of vital importance to the hurricane behind him, because that hurricane has a 105 mil sight. What that means to him is, as he saddles up behind that 190 and he looks through, when the wing ticks touch the sides of that circle, he's 100 meters distance. It's that math thing going on. Likewise, when he's half the distance of the ring, he's at 200 meters. When he's at a quarter of the distance of the ring, he's at 400 meters. And when he's twice the size of the ring, he's at 50 meters <laughs> right, right there on top of him. And this is going to be important later on when we set up convergence. Now we can use this to determine distance for other objects. For example, a HE-111 is twice the size of Falk Wolf 190. When he's wingtips on the circle, he's at 200 meters. Uh, lots of folks wind up shooting when they're five, six, seven thousand meters off because they don't understand just how big that sucker is and what distance it's at. Likewise, we know that the 109 is about the same size, but that 110 is about a third bigger. So he's 130 meters off when he's wingtip to wingtip. Uh, Zero and the Stuka, they're a little bit uh, bigger too. You just got to know if it's bigger and it's touching, it's further away. Uh, ground objects are about half the size of that, about five meters long. So uh, they're a lot closer than you think most times when you're going to shoot them. Uh, that's why a lot of folks either wind up uh, with a lot of rounds scattered around or actually diving into the ground. Let's see what that looks like in practice. At the start of this movie, I had a little thing where I come in and shot this Moultrie AAA on a convoy. Well, I knew where to get him because he's half the size. So half of the distance is 100 meters. Take a quarter of it, that's 200 meters, and figure that's kind of a ring. Now, if I take half of that again, it's 400 meters and make a little ring there. When his nose is touching that little ring, he's at 400 meters. I want to shoot at 300. So I take reaction time into account and squeeze the trigger right there. What that's going to do is, once the rounds actually start to hit him, he'll be at 300 meters. You can see there it's just about right. And as you can see, he blows up. Coming in from behind, I know a truck is about 2 meters wide, so that puts him just slightly wider than that pip in the middle. As you can see, there's a truck full of gas in the front of that other one there. Now that we can judge distance, we're going to make the most of it in convergence. That's no more than where your guns meet. The wing guns, they all cross to the middle, and the cannons in the nose, they'll uh, actually arc up and down, and they all meet into one specific spot. Now, if it's all perfect and you're in the right place, you're going to hit dead center with all your guns in one spot right on the airplane, or the target. If your convergence is off, or you're firing too close, you're only going to hit with part of your guns, and stuff will be scattered around. While I can't go through every single aircraft and every single site, this is what I found. The British aircraft seem to have the Falk Wolf at 100 meters. Uh, German fighters happen to have the Spitfire at 100 meters. That's called turnabout. The Soviets are kind of strange. They've got the Falk Wolf 90 at 150 meters to the outer hash marks. That's those little tick marks on the inside. Uh, the Navy's got a 100 mil ring. It's slightly less than a zero. And the Japanese are a Corsair 
one ring from the outer ring. That outside ring is like an extra border. Uh, you just got to kind of look through and uh, see what your aircraft is doing. Here's the rules of thumb. Know your sight. Test it out against one Comni aircraft. Find the wingtip to wingtip range and then compare different sizes of objects and use that as a gauge. Figure out what range you're the most successful in hitting targets and then adjust your convergence to fit your skills. There's no right answer and there's no book that'll tell you exactly what the best convergence is. Well that's it for uh, this one. I hope I gave you all a great big old smile and uh, uh, sorry for being so dang long winded.